Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. With this video, I am going to start a new series which is called WebLogic Support Activities. And in this series, I will cover a lot of random activities related with the WebLogic server. So that means I am going to share some random knowledge with you, okay, with respect to the WebLogic server, which is very important to understand uh, either you are working in a support or as a WebLogic admin. So in this part one, I am going to cover view changes and restarts. Okay, so we all know when we do some changes from the admin console, we have a lock and edit button and then we do the changes and then we activate the changes. Okay, but what happened in between? Like if we are doing some changes and the changes are not activated, but are in the pending state, then where exactly it is stored the configurations? What all are the changes required the restart? How we can verify it? If the changes that we have done, is it, it required restart or not? Okay, and then how we can change the mode of domain, how we can unlock a user account, how we can change the console console extension. So console extension is whenever we access the admin console, then we give the context as slash console, right? So that console context we can change easily. Okay, that I will show you how we can change that one. And then few discussion on the cluster load balancing algorithms. Okay, so now, now this is the view of your admin console. Okay, so if you see the option just above the lock and edit button, which is called view changes and restart, this is a hyperlink. Okay, many engineers are not aware about this option. Okay, so once you will click on view changes and restarts, okay, then you will see the three tabs. One is a change list, second is restart checklist, and third is other edit options. Right, so now what is change list? So this page lists the pending changes currently applied to the domain, but not yet activated. That means if you are doing any changes from the admin console, and if you have not activated those changes, and in between you wanted to see like what all are the changes I have done in the domain before the activation of the changes, then you can click on the view changes and restart hyperlink, and then you can click on the change list, and all the changes will get reflected here. Those are not activated. This I will show you in the next few screens as well. Okay. Second is the restart checklist. So suppose that you have done some changes and then you have uh, activated the changes. Okay. And then you wanted to see the restart checklist that how many servers or which server actually need the restart. This is again, depend on the kind of a configurations that you have done. You may have to restart only the admin server, or you may have to restart the complete domain and along with the managed servers. So after the activation of changes, if you wanted to see that, uh, I really need to start the managed server or admin server for the changes that you have done. Then you can go to view changes and restart and then click on restart checklist and it will show you the name of server. Those need to be restarted. And third option is other edit stations, right? So that means whenever you log into admin console and click on lock and edit, then it automatically take the log for you. In the screen, you can see that I have logged in as a WebLogic user, right? And then I have taken the lock and edit session, right? So once you will click on uh, on 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 the uh, view changes and restart then uh, in in the edit session it will show you the web logic okay but now logged in with a different user you can see on the screen i have logged in with a user web logic admin okay and once you will log in with a different admin user then you will see the option take like lock and edit so now why it is saying take lock and edit because the session is already locked by a user web logic so that you can see in the option other edit sessions here you can see the owned by web logic that means lock is already taken by the user web logic if you want to, to take the lock now you can click on take lock and edit and then it will override the session right so here it is i have clicked on the take lock and edit and after that you will see the other edit station then it will show you the lock now is owned by the web logic admin and this is how change list restart checklist and other edit sessions works right so now i will show you with an example for example let us see how we can change the mode of the domain so we have two modes for the domain one is the production and second is the development mode so currently my domain uh, was in development mode so i clicked on the domain name in the admin console then click on configurations general tab inside general tab you will have option production mode, right if you wanted to uh, change your mode to production then you can select, select this one and then click on save if you wanted to change your domain mode to development mode then deselect this option and click on save right so now i have deselected the production mode that i mean, that means i have changed my domain mode to development okay and right now i have not activated the changes i have only enabled the disabled the production mode and clicked on save okay so before activating the changes once you go to change list 
Okay, then you can see the pending changes. So on the screen, you can see that there are 49 screens, right, with the next option are displaying on the screen. So why 49? Because I have changed the option of domain or I have changed the domain mode from production to development. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, differences. There are a lot of differences between the production mode and development mode. Okay, so if you are changing the mode, then all of the changes that has to be applied in the development mode or in the production mode will be get reflected here, right inside the change list pending changes because I have not activated the changes. Now, if you click on the restart checklist, <clears throat> okay, after the click on the activated, okay, then you will see that admin server ms1 and ms2 so i have one admin server and two many servers there so that means after activating the changes i have to restart my complete domain right so once we click on activated it will show you on the top as well which is showing on the screen as well all changes have been activated however three items must be restarted for the changes to take effect so this will be shown at the once once we click on the activate activated right but once you will navigate to different screens then this you will not able to see this message so in that case, you again go to view changes and restart and click on restart checklist. And they, then you can see that some of the changes are already pending there. Right. So now in this screen, I have not activated <clears throat> my domain, which I have changed to uh, development by deselecting the option production mode. Right. So my changes are not activated yet. So in that case, when you have done some changes in your domain, but your changes are not activated. Okay. Then you will see a folder with name pending inside your domain. So whatever the changes that we have done, which is not activated yet, it is saved inside the folder pending, which is in your domain. So here you can see that uh, there is a file called config.xml is already created inside the pending folder. Okay. And what I have shown in the previous screen, I have changed the domain mode from production to development. Right. And <clears throat> immediately after that one, I will have a file config.xml inside the pending folder. And once you will see the difference in your main config.xml file which is inside the domain and the file which is inside the pending right you will see the production mode is false okay that means this is the change that i have done from the console but it is pending that means i have not clicked on the activated yet right so once you will activate the changes from the console okay like now i have activated the changes from the console which is showing that three items need to be restarted that means my admin and manage server and again if you go to the pending folder inside the domain then you will see the files has been removed from there that means once you will do any changes from the admin console all the changes will be saved inside the pending folder till you will activate the changes from the admin console once you will activate the changes it will the, the content will be removed from the pending folder this is about how this uh, change restart options works now how we unlock a user for that you have to click on domain right so because we all know that uh, uh, the users users and groups we manage from the realms right once when we talk about to unlock a user, for that you have to click on the domain name from your admin console. After that, you click on the security tab, then unlock user tab. Then you will see your option unlock username. Enter the username there and click on save, and that user will get unlocked. Right. Another option that I said to you that console extension. Very few people are aware about that one. Okay. When we access the admin console, then we give the context as slash console, right? If you wanted to change that console option, that means, for example, you have a three or four different environments. And sometimes what happens is that where we open a lot of different environment tabs with in parallel, right? And then if you wanted to wanted to make a differentiation between the URLs, okay? For example, uh, for production, I wanted to have my console extension as prod console. For development, I want my console extension as dev console. Similarly, for other environment, I may need a different context for each and every environment. So for that, you can easily change the context of your admin console as well. For that, you have to click on the domain, then configuration, general tab. Inside general tab, click on the advanced option. Inside advanced option, you will see your option console context path. The by default is console. This is how we access the admin console. So let's change it, okay? In my case, I have changed it to admin console. So from console, I have changed it to admin console, right? And then you will see the restart checklist. That means after this change, I need to restart the complete domain. That means all of the managed servers, including your admin server. 
Now to that, start the server again, restart the servers, and then again try to access the admin console with the help of slash console extension, then it will not work. And then try to access with the help of admin console. This is a new context that I have configured and I can able to access the console, right? So by this way, you can configure the different context for your different environment so that you can easily differentiate when you are accessing the multiple URLs in parallel, right? Last one is cluster load balancing. Okay, so I have posted many videos on load balancing and the cluster algorithms and OHS, HTTP servers. And these things I have explained earlier as well in all the videos, okay? When we talk about the algorithms for the cluster load balancing, okay, there are multiple algorithms, but when we talk about the practical algorithms, those we really use in the environments, the one is a round robin, weight based, and the random. It is very clear from the name as well. Okay, round robin is which is the default uh, algorithm for your cluster. Okay, that means it will send the request to the multiple servers in the cluster in round robin session so me that means if i have two managed servers the first request goes to managed server one and second will go to managed server two again in case of a third request it will go to managed server one and the fourth request will go to managed server two this is called a round robin okay and this is a default algorithm for your cluster uh, your uh, weblogic cluster right and when we talk about the load balancing via weblogic proxy plugin that means if you are using some web server in front of your web logic, okay, from where you are redirecting the request to your web logic server where your proxy plugin is enabled, okay, then for that web server, this is the only algorithm which is supported or this is the only default and supported algorithm round robin, okay, and but when we talk about the different algorithms, like as I said, weight base, random, these are the algorithms supported by the clustered objects, okay, not for the web request. This I have explained in very detail in my some other videos, okay? Because from the web server, the request that we get from the uh, to the weblogic server, it is the web request, right? That we access with the help of HTTP or HTTPS. But when we talk about the clustered object stubs, okay? Those take the status of the cluster and in case of any server goes down or not working properly, then your stubs can remove the cluster from the server. But in a server, we deploy a lot of different kind of applications. We deploy the web applications. Along with that, we deploy the code as well. For example, my code, which is developed in the EJBs. And the different type of calls that I'm getting on my server is HTTP call, HTTPS call, T3 call. Okay. And then I could have our RMIs like remote method invocation. That means I am accessing the, my uh, code or my servers directly with the help of certain clients, not from the browser. Okay. So when it is a JVM to JVM call, okay, it is a RMI call, remote method invocation call. Okay. In that case, all other algorithms works. But for HTTP, the, that means only for the WebLogic proxy plugins, only the algorithm that is supported is round robin. In a simple way, you can say that when you are using any OHS or any web server in front of the web logic for uh, request load balancing to your clusters, then only supported algorithm is the round robin for the web logic proxy plugin. But when we talk about the clustered objects, then the supported algorithms are weight, weight base and random round robin and few more affinity algorithms are also there are practically when we talk about then only the algorithm that we use is round robin, weight base and the random. So round robin I have explained, but when we talk about the weight base, it's again clear from the name as well. For each and every managed server, we define the weightage. Okay, for example, I have two managed servers in the cluster. To one server, I have given the weightage only 20%, but to other server, I have given the 80%. That means 20 and 80. Why? That what I want is that only 20% of the request, whatever the request that is coming to the web logic, 20% of the request should be handled by the web managed server one, 80% of the request should be handled by the managed server two. Okay, so why we define this kind of uh, weight based round ro uh, robin algorithm is in web logic, we have an option of clustering, right? Where we have a horizontal cluster, that means we have a multiple independent machines where we can scale the web logic clusters. Right. Sometimes it is also possible that one machine is not without of the same configurations as of the other machine. That means 
machine one where my minus server one is running is having very less configurations in terms of CPU, RAM, and the storage. And the managed server two, where the managed server two is running, that machine is with the higher capacity in terms of RAM, CPU, and everything, right? So in that case, I know that my managed server one, which is running on the less capacity machine, would able to handle the less number of requests in comparison with the managed server two, right? So based on that, we can define the weightage for the different managed servers. That means completely based on the availability of hardwares where that particular managed server is running in the cluster. So this is called a weight-based round robin algorithm and third one is the random again very clear from the random there is no algorithm uh, such something like weight base or or round robin the request whatever come to your cluster or to your web logic server it will get moved or diverted to any of the available managed server in the cluster randomly okay this kind of algorithm is helpful when you have uh, all the servers or all the hardware machines where your managed servers are running are with the same capacity okay if it is a same capacity then you can send the request anywhere but yes this type of algorithm can create a slight problem with respect to the load balancing okay because if it is sending randomly and any of the server is in under the higher load then they that server may get the some more request as well which is not possible in uh, which is very smartly handled with the some other algorithms right so this is all about some random activities and very soon i will come with the second part as well and stay tuned till then